Ashley Brock, reading Nora Roberts' book, Inner Harbor, Chapter 7. She got, she got to her car and yanked at the door handle before she realized she locked it, which was, she told herself frantically, a stupid knee-jerk urban habit that had no po more place in this pretty royal neighborhood than she did. The next thing she realized was that she'd run out of the house without a purse, her jacket, her keys, and that she would walk back to the hotel before she would go back inside and face the quins again after her rude and emotional behavior. She whirled when she heard footsteps behind her and wasn't sure if she re was relieved or embarrassed to see Philip coming toward her. She didn't know what she was. What it was that was bubbling up inside her, burning and swelling her heart in her throat. She only knew she had to escape. I'm sorry. I know that was rude. I really have to go. In a rush to get out, the words bumped and doubled over. <laughs> Would you mean... <laughs> Would you mind getting my purse? I need my purse. My keys? I'm sorry. I hope I didn't spoil whatever was bubbling in her throat. Was I had higher choke. I have to go. You're shaking. Instead of gently reached for her, but she jerked back. It's gold. I forgot my jacket. It's not the gold, Sabil. Come here. No, I'm leaving. I have a headache. I... No, don't touch me. Ignore the words. He drew firmly against him, wrapping his arms tied around her and held on. That's all right, baby. No, it's not. She wanted to scream. Was he blind? Was he stupid? She didn't have come. Your brother hates me. Says afraid of me. You, your, I. Oh, it hurt. The pressure in her chest was agony. And it was fine. Let me go. I don't belong here. Yes, you do. <laughs> You've seen it. That connection when she and Seth had stared at each other. Her eyes such a clear blue. He's so brilliant. He'd all but heard the click. No one hates you. No one's afraid of you. <laughs> Let go, will you? He pressed his mouth to her temple. Would have sworn he felt the pain, isn't it? Why won't you let go? I'm not going to cause a scene. It's just, I just get my purse. I'll go. She was holding herself rigid as a marble, but the marble was cracking, he thought, trembling with the pressure. If she didn't let go, she would explode. So he would have to push. He remembered you. He remembered that you cared. Through the hideous pressure that would, there was a stab in the stab pierced. I can't stand it. I can't bear it. Her hands gripped his shoulders, fingers clenching. Up. She, she, she took him away. She took him away. I, it broke my heart. She was sobbing now, her arms tied around his head. I know. I know, did. That's that's why. He murmured and simply picked her up, sat her on the grass, and cradled against him. It's about damn time. He rocked her, while tears that were hot and desperate flooding out of her, soaked his shirt cold, he thought as the firestorm of grief whipped through her. There was nothing cold in her but the fear of emotional pain. He didn't tell her to stop even when she saw her stop. Shook so violently it seemed her bones might snap. He didn't offer promises of comfort or solution. It was the value of purging, so he simply choked and rocked, cradled her while she wept out the pain. When Anna stepped out on the porch, Philip shook his head at her, stroking, stroking still we continued to rock her as the door shut again and left them alone where she cried herself dry her head felt swollen and hot her throat and stomach raw weak and disordered she lay exhausted in his arms i'm sorry don't be he needed that i don't think i've ever known anyone who needed a crying jack more doesn't solve anything you know better than that. He rose and held her, being up, pulled her towards him. Get in. No, I need to. Get in. He repeated with just a hint of image. I'll go get your purse and your jacket. He left her in the bed. Well, you're not driving. His eyes met her type of And you're not going to be alone tonight. She didn't have the energy to argue. She felt hollowed out and in insubstantial. He took her back. He took her back to the hotel. She could sleep. She'd take a pill if she had to and escape. She didn't want to think. If she started to think, she might feel again. If she felt again, if any part of that flood of feeling came back, she would drown in it because his face looked grim and entirely too determined when he strode out of the house with her things. So Bill accepted her own cowardice and closed her eyes. He didn't speak. Simply climbed in beside her, leaned over to secure her seatbelt, and started the car. The blessed silence hang through the drive. She didn't protest when he came into the lobby with her or when he opened her purse for her key card at her door he took her hand again and led her directly to the bedroom get undressed he ordered and she stared at him with those small red eyes he had i'm not gonna jump you for christ's sakes what do you take me for he didn't know where the flare of temper had come from maybe he was looking at her like this seeing her so utterly wrecked and defenseless turning on his heel he marched into the bathroom seconds later she heard the drum of water in the tub 
came out with glass and have to swallow. If you don't take care of yourself, someone else has to. The water felt like glory on her absurd throat, abused throat. But before she could think of me, pulled the glass out of her hand and set it aside. She swayed a little. When he took her sweat over her head, you're going to take a hot bath and relax. She was too certified to argue as he continued to undress her like a doll. When he laid her clothes aside, she shivered a little but didn't speak. She only started her, stared at him when he picked her up, carried her into the bathroom, deposited her in the tub. The water was high and a great deal hotter than she considered healthy before she get her mind around the words to mention it. He flicked off the sister's officer. Sit back, shut your eyes. Do it, he said with such unexpected force that she obeyed. She kept them closed even when she heard the door click shut behind him. She stayed there for twenty minutes, nearly nodding off twice. Only the vague fear of drowning kept her from sinking into sleep, and the niggling idea that he would come back and pull her out and dry her off himself was what made her climb shakily out of the tub. Then again, maybe he'd gone. Maybe he'd finally gotten disgusted with her outburst and left her alone. Who could blame him? But he was standing by the terrace doors in her bedroom. Then she stepped out looking at her. When she stepped out looking out at her. Her view of the bay. Thank you. She knew it was awkward for both of them, struggling to make the effort when he turned and stared at her. I'm sorry. You apologize again, so Bill, you're going to piss me off. He walked toward her as he spoke, with his hands on her shoulders. He cocked his eyebrows when she got better. He decided running his fingers over her shoulders. Well, not perfect. Lie down. He sighed, pulled her towel toward him. I'm not after sex. I do have some small level of restraint, and I can call on one I'm faced with emotional, physical, exhausted women on your stubborn. Come on. She slid onto the bed and couldn't quite muffle the moan when his fingers began to knead along her shoulder blades. You're a psychologist, he reminded. What happens to someone who presses their feelings on a regular basis? Physically or emotionally? He laughed a little. Strangled. Str straddling her then got seriously downward i'll tell you what happens doc they get headaches heartburn stomach pains and if when their dam breaks it all floods out so hard and so fast that they make themselves sick took the rub off her shoulders and used the heels of his hands to press the muscles you're angry with me no i'm not so bill not with you tell me about when seth stayed with you it was a long time ago he was four Philip promptly concentrated on the muscles that had just since you were in New York. Same place you have now? Yes, Central Park West. It's a quiet neighborhood. Safe. Exclusive, Phil thought. No Trinity East Village for Dr. Griffin. Couple of bedrooms. Yes, I used the second as my office. He could almost see it. Tidy organized attractive. I guess that's where Seth slept. No, Gloria took that room. We put Seth on the living room sofa. He was just a little boy. They just showed up on your doorstep one day. More or less, I hadn't seen her in years. I knew about Seth. She called me when the man she married left him, left her. Sent her money off and on. I didn't want her to come. I never said she couldn't, but I didn't want her to come. She's so disruptive, so difficult. But she did come. Yes, I came back from a lecture one afternoon, and she was waiting outside the building. She was furious because the doorman wouldn't let her in, wouldn't let her go to my apartment. Seth was crying, and she was screaming. It was just, she said, typical, I suppose. But you let her in. I couldn't just send her away. All she had was this little boy in a backpack. She begged me to let them stay for a while. She said she'd been hitchhiking, that she was broke. She started crying, and said she just got on the couch and fell asleep. He must have been exhausted. How long did they stay? A few weeks. Her mind began to drift between them, and now sliding back and forth. I was going to help her get a job, but she said she needed a rest first. She said she'd been sick. Then she said a truck driver in Oklahoma had raped her. I knew she was lying, but she was your sister. No, no. She said, well, if I'd been honest, I would have admitted that that had stopped mattering years before. But Seth was... He hardly spoke. I didn't know anything about children, but I got a book, and it indicated he should have been more verbal. He nearly smiled. So easy to picture selecting the proper book, studying it, trying to put everything in order. He was like this little ghost, she murmured, this little shadow in the apartment. When Gloria would go out for any length of time and leave him with me, he'd creep out a little. The first night she didn't come home until morning, he had a nightmare, and he let him sleep with you and told him a story. The Frog Prince. My nanny told it to me. She liked fairy tales. He was afraid of the dark. I used to be afraid of the dark. Her voice was thick and slow with me. I used to want to sleep in my parents' bed when I was afraid, but I wasn't allowed to. But 
I didn't think it would hurt him just for a little while. No. Now we can see her. Young girl with dark hair and light eyes trembling in the dark. It would never hurt. He used to like to look at my perfume bottles. He liked the colors and the shapes. I bought him crowns. He always liked to draw pictures. He got him a stuffed dog. He liked to watch the dogs. We walked in the park. He was so sweet when I gave it to him. He carried it around everywhere. He slept with it. He fell in love with him. I loved him so much. I don't know how it happened. It was only a few weeks. Time doesn't always factor in. He skimmed her hair back so he could see her profile. Cover of her cheek. Then go over bow, bro. It doesn't all I didn't care that she stole from me when she left, but she took him. She didn't even let me say goodbye to him. She took him and she left his little dog because she knew it would hurt me. She knew I would think about him crying for it at night and worry. So I had to stop. I had to stop thinking about it. I had to stop thinking about him. It's all right. That part's all over now. He stroked gently, nudging her closer. Like, she won't hurt Seth anymore, were you? I was stupid. <laughs> no, you weren't. <laughs> he stroked her neck, her shoulders, felt her body rise and fall on a long, long side. Go to sleep. <laughs> Don't go. Um, no, I'm not. He frowned at how fragile the nap of her neck looked on her face. I'm not going anywhere. And that was the problem. He realized as he smoothed his hands down her arms over her back, he wanted to stay with her, to be with her. He wanted to watch her sleep just the way she was sleeping now, deep and still. He wanted to be the one who held her when she cried, for her, for he doubted that she cried often or that she had anyone to hold her when she did. He wanted to watch those quiet lake eyes of hers go bright with laughter, that lovely soft mouth curve, curve with it. He could spend hours listening to the way her voice changed tones from warm amusement to prime formality to earnestness. He liked the way she looked in the morning, vaguely surprised to see him beside her, and at night, with pleasure and passion flickering over her face. She had no clue how revealing that face was. He thought as he tucked down the covers, shifted her until he could spread them over her. Oh, it was subtle, like her scent. A man had to get close, very close, before he understood, but he gotten close, very close, without either of them realizing it. He'd seen the way she watched his family with wistfulness, with yearning, always staying in, staying a step back, always the observer. <laughs> And he'd seen the way she watched said with love and with longing, and again, from a distance, so as not to intrude, to protect herself. He thought it was a combination of both. He wasn't quite sure exactly what went on in her heart and in her mind, but he was determined to find out. I think I might be in love with you, Sibyl. He said it quietly as he stretched out. Damn, if that doesn't complicate things for the both of us. <laughs> she woke in the dark. For a moment, just a flash, she was a child again, afraid of all the same things that lurked in the shadows. She had to press her lips together very hard until it hurts, because if she cried out, one of the servants would hear, and might tell her mother. Her mother would be annoyed. Her mother wouldn't like it that she cried about the dark again. Then she remembered, she wasn't a child. There was nothing lurking in the shadows but shadows. She was a grown woman who knew it was supposed to be afraid of the dark when there was so much else to fear. Oh, she made a fool of herself, she thought, as more memories slipped through. Terrifying fool of herself. Letting herself become upset that way. Worse, letting it show till she had no control, none whatsoever. Instead of maintaining her composure, she rushed out of the house like an idiot. Inexcusable! Then she cried all over Philip wept like a baby right in front of the yard as if she'd fill up mortified had her moaning aloud covering her face with her hands sucked in a gasp when an arm came on she, she recognized his touch his scent even before he drew her against him before his mouth brushed at her temple before his body fit comfortably to hers it's all right i i thought you'd gone i said i'd stay he slid his eyes open scanned the dull red glow of the bedside the alarm 3 a.m. hotel time. Should have figured it. I didn't mean to wake you. As her eyes grew acute, accustomed to the dark, she could make out the swept of his cheekbone, the ridge of his nose, the shape of his mouth, her fingers itched to touch. When I wake up in the middle of the night in bed with a beautiful woman, it's hard to mind. <laughs> She smiled, relieved that he wasn't going to press her about her earlier behavior. It could just be the two of them now, not yesterday to mourn over, nor tomorrow to worry about. I imagine you've had lots of practice. Some things you want to get just right. His voice was so warm, his arms so strong, his body so firm. When you wake up in the middle of the night in bed with a woman, and she wants to seduce you, do you mind? Hardly ever.
Well, if you wouldn't mind, she shifted, slid her body over his, found his lips with hers, lips, his tongue with her tongue. I'll let you know as soon as I start to mind. Her laugh was slow and warm, glad she'd moved through her for what he'd done for her, what he'd come to be to her. She wanted badly to show him. It was dark. She could be anything she wanted to be in the dark. Maybe I won't stop if you do. Threats. He was ever been as surprised and aroused by the teasing part of her voice. As he was by the deliberate circling trail with fingertips down his body. You don't scare me. I can. She made a follow trail with her mouth. I will. Give it your best shot. Jesus. His eyes all crossed. All but crossed. Bullseye. She laughed again and laughed at him like a cat when his body quivered and his breathing grew thick and ragged. She cracked her nails slowly up his sides and down again. What a wonder the male form was. She thought, dreamily exploring it hard, smooth, the planes and angles so perfectly fashioned to mate with women with her. Silky here, then rough firm than yielding she could make him want an ache just as much as he made her want an ache she could give she could take just as he did and all the wonderful and wicked things people did in dark dark should she could do he'd go mad if she continued <laughs> he'd die if she stopped her mouth was hot and restless and everywhere those elegant fingers had the blood raging through his veins as their flesh grew damp her body slipped and slid slipped and slid over his a pale silhouette in the dark she was any woman the only woman he craved her like life dreamlike she rose up over him struggling out of her rope arching her back shaking her hair back what soared through him now was freedom power lust her eyes gleam cat-like against the dark bewitching him she lowered herself taking him inside her slowly dimly aware of whatever it cost him to allow her set the pace her breath came released on a morning sigh of pleasure caught again released again when his hands captured her breast squeezed possessed she dropped small movements torturously slow rousing herself with a power kept her eyes on his shuddered beneath her his muscles bunched his body tight between her thighs strong she thought he was so strong strong enough to let her take him as he chose she skimmed her hands over his chest then lowered her hair curtain her faces as her mouth closed hard over his, and single tongues and teeth and breath, the orgasm rolled through her like a wave, growing, building, and sweeping her up and over. She reared back with it, body bowing, and rode it out. Then she rode him. He gripped her hips, his fingers digging in as she surged over him, all reckless speed and clashing light now, all heat and greed. His mind emptied, his lungs screamed, and his body climbed desperately toward release. When he found it, it was brutal and brilliant. She seemed to melt over him. Her body is soft and hot and fluid as a pool of liquid wax. Her heart thudded hard against the frantic beat of his own. He couldn't speak. Couldn't find the air to push the words free. The ones that shimmered on his tongue were three that he'd been careful of. Her sad old woman triumphed so glowered inside her. She stretched lazily and satisfied as a cat that curled herself against him. That, she said to him, was exactly right. What? <laughs> she chuckled softly and did it on a yawn. I may not have scared you, but I'd fried your brain. No question. A sex scrambled brain. Men who started thinking about love, much less bringing the word up when they were hot and naked and wrapped around a woman, just got themselves in trouble. First time I ever liked waking up at 3 a.m. Already half asleep, she filled her head on her shoulder. She said, cold she muttered he reached down tucked up the tangled sheets and blankets she, she nipped an edge with her fingers pulled them up to her chin for the second time in one night felt blue awake staring at the ceiling while she slept day, deep and still beside him end of chapter 17